Hello, friends. Welcome to Emmanuel Cares, a podcast of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Shirley, Wisconsin. This is midweek service, a uh, sermon from Luke 22, 47 to 53. The sermon theme is restraint, part of a larger theme for Lent, which would be God on trial. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God's word from Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 47. While Jesus was still speaking, suddenly a crowd appeared, and a man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He came near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was about to happen, they said to him, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus responded, Stop! No more of this! Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. He said to the chief priest, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as you would against a robber with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness rules. This is God's word. We pray, direct us now, gracious Lord, to hear aright your holy word. Assist your minister to preach and let the Holy Spirit teach. And let eternal light be found by all who hear the gospel sound. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, you've been wronged. Some injustice has been done to you. Can you feel your temperature rising? Can you just imagine? Maybe you're thinking of some injustice that's already been done to you. You're starting to breathe a little bit more aggressively. Maybe starting to sweat. You can feel things just tensing up. You're ready to explode. Restraint is the word that we're talking about today. And when you feel like you're under attack, when you feel like you are on trial how difficult it is for us to show restraint. Now Jesus told his disciples everything that was going to happen that we read about. He told them that he was going to be treated like a criminal. He told them that he was going to be handed over. But when it happened, what, ha- what did the disciples do? Their blood began to pump, their their adrenaline started flowing, and they they all asked Jesus, what should we do? Should we strike with our swords? You know, Peter gets the bad rap because he's the one that actually cuts off the guy's ear, but he's not the only one that's all ready to go and all ready to strike and all ready to react. Why do they react this way? Because they're human, like you and I. When our backs are against the wall, we lash out. Maybe it's in the anger that we say. Maybe it's anger that we don't say to the person we're mad at, but we, say, we direct that anger to someone else. Someone else should know about the injustice that's been done to us and how we've been wrong and how it isn't fair. Maybe even lash out physically. Why do we do that? Why did the disciples do that? Because we're human. Because we have a sinful nature that thinks and protects for itself. If we've been wronged, our sinful nature is right there to say, let's wrong them back. If something has been bad has happened to us, let's go. Let's finish this. Our sinful nature is always ready to go. And our world with its clickbait culture, with people who, who want to make those, those uh, sound bites that's just an out, um, a minute long, and it's filled with anger and wrath toward the other side. We're living, we're, we're, we're saturated, and people reacting off of their sinful nature, reacting off of their anger. Like the Bible says, in our anger, do not sin. Well, there's a lot of sinning going on with the anger around in this world. Restraint. 
Why did the disciples react the way they did? They had a sinful nature. Struck off a man's ear with a sword. And Jesus says, stop. No more of this. In contrast to the disciples and in contrast to us, we have Jesus showing restraint. And it starts with Judas coming to give him a kiss on the cheek. Can you just imagine how infuriated Jesus could have been? Judas, I told you you were going to betray me. I warned you. And still you went through with it? We imagine Jesus could just overturn everything like he overturned the, the, the tables in the temple when they were using it to, to, to make money in, in the place of worship. We imagine Jesus doing that, but instead he has restraint. And the words that come out of his mouth, he's not shouting. Judas, do you betray a man, son of man with a kiss? When the disciples react in their anger and they commit a sin by harming their neighbor, Jesus says, stop, no more of this. What could have Jesus done? He could have called down legions of angels to defend him. He could have walked through them as if they, did. they weren't even there. But instead, he goes with them. Instead, he heals the man's ear. He loves his enemies. He does speak. He warns them. He says, if I've done something wrong, how come you didn't arrest me when I was doing it all out in public? If, if the things, I was, I was out there in the streets, I wasn't hiding anywhere. Why didn't you arrest me then? He does respond. But it is not in sin. He restrains himself. Restraint is a gift of the Holy Spirit because it falls under self-control. Our emotions are not sinful. The fact that we get angry isn't sinful. It's what we do with that anger. Do we harm our neighbor in word or action? Restraint. There is value in not treating others the way that they deserve to be treated. Not responding in kind. And that's what Jesus does for us. For our salvation, in our place, Jesus knows when to use his anger and not sin. He does that for you and I. And this isn't the end of his restraint. He's going to go before Caiaphas. He's going to go before. We're going to hear all of, the, of, of all the people that Jesus goes before and how he demonstrates restraint for us, not letting his anger get the best of him for us and for our salvation. And it culminates on the cross when he's getting his nails, his hands, nails going through his hands. Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. He does that for you and I. And because he does that for you and I, you and I are forgiven. God looks at us and says, you are my child. You are one who has restraint because of Jesus. You have self-control because of Jesus. This is what you have. It wasn't there before but you have it now because God in his word declares it to you. You know, <clears throat> Jesus is always in control. And part of those times when we do get angry, when we start to let that anger start to ferment inside of it, isn't that part of our, isn't that driving us to sin? We gotta take control. We gotta make sure that we're in control of the situation that we're not stepped on, that, are, that we're still respected at the end of the day. 
Jesus has done everything for you. He is always in control. We talked about that in confirmation class today. God's will is that he will work all things out for our good. Romans 8, 28. So we have that confidence that when injustice happens to us, when our anger starts to rise, we know God's in control. That there can be another response rather than one fueled by anger. Uh, This last football season, there was an example of that. The rookie quarterback for the Houston Texans, C.J. Stroud, his team went to the first round of the playoffs. They played the Cleveland Browns, and they lost. And he was a quarterback who wanted to put his faith in, on his sleeve, and he would begin his press conferences talking about his faith in Jesus Christ. But you can guess, because it wasn't some generic God, that he was being specific about who he believes in, Jesus Christ, and how grateful he is to Jesus Christ for everything, that NBC would cut that part out. And they did. Then when he was interviewed later, they said, are you upset? Because they cut this, your, your testimony out, and here's what he said. I'm not angry about it. I wish that I wasn't, that, but you know, I pray for people, and I think God has called us to love one another through thick and thin mistakes or success. I just want to show love. We're not all perfect as people. Even myself, I follow the Lord, but I'm not perfect, and I try to be that light in a dark time. There's a lot of darkness in this world. I think God has called us to really just be a light to one another and just show love. It's a little different than showing anger, isn't it? A different response. Now, his career is young. I'm sure he's probably going to have some sort of an outburst of anger because he's a human being like you and I. But here in this moment, at this time, at this, in regard to this incident, we see a light shining in the darkness. Showing kindness and praying for those, even those who wronged him. That doesn't come naturally. It only comes through the Holy Spirit working through the word which we have. That operates with restraint that doesn't let our anger get the best of us. Imagine you can Im- the impact you have in this overcharged world where restraint is a lost art. You know Jesus. You know the one who showed love and restraint all the way to his death on the cross. You know Jesus who is in control of all things, working them for the good of his people. That means you and I can be different. We can use our words to heal and to help instead of inflame and to destroy. We can think of the hurt others feel rather than the hurt that they have caused us. We can respond graciously and not impulsively when we're provoked by those around us. You know, there's one more thing that Jesus says that I find extremely comforting when you're thinking about the injustice. There he is in the garden, they're going to arrest him. And instead of lashing out, we've talked about all those things, but very, at the very, very end, what does he say? This is your hour when darkness reigns. Hour. Not week, not year, not even day. Your hour. Here Jesus has a big picture for us. A big picture of what eternity is like. And for us as Christians who have often been wrong as we face injustice, as we're living in darkness and having darkness happen to us just for an hour. Just for an hour. Because of what's to come. That, and including God's word, which reminds us of what we have, may that give you strength to show restraint. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today here on Emmanuel Cares, the podcast. We encourage you to find out more about us on our webpage at emmanuelshirley.com. There's Bible connections. There's a podcast called Casting Nets. There's opportunities for you to get involved to help us to be a country church that cares. Emmanuel means God with us. When you leave today knowing that your God is with you because he cares for you.